It's always good to start with a laugh. I know. <laughs> okay, good morning. Uh, this is wonderful to be with Elaine Halides this morning and in the, uh, as a series of love notes from Viva. I think we got the number wrong yesterday, Sheila. But I'm going to randomly say this is either 12 or 9. This is 11. <laughs> it's 11, right. Um, so, Welcome, Elaine. And I know that you've you popped on and off different one list conversations yes. we've had. Yes. Um, this is our this is our way of Viva giving, if you like. So we like to bring our speakers on, and you, you're with us in October, which is absolutely marvellous. Um, and just have little conversations, uh, although it'll be a lot of listening to you. Um, <laughs> share just to share some of the topic ideas and <laughs> just to jump in, really. Um, <laughs> And I've known you for many, many years, and you're yes. my good friend. And yes. course, uh, you, I've watched and admired you building your, well, no, you have, you've steadfastly yeah. built your um, programs and your offerings to people. And it's probably better mm -hmm. if you want to say anything about that, but I'm going to really just hand over to you. Yeah. And these are, yeah. you never know where we're going with them. So yeah, that's we'll nice. Lovely with you. That's nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for having me on here. Well, when you said pick a topic, I mean, you know, you both know what I'm like. I'm, somebody said I'm a bit like a Duracell bunny. You could just wind me up and talk about anything and go and make a cup of tea or whatever, and I'll still be talking. <laughs> so, you know, I, I really didn't mind what topic it was. But I did think when you asked me for one, I thought, well, something that I do like to, to talk about sometimes is the not taking things personally. Because um, this has occurred to me more and more over the years. I've, I've, I've seen it with other people and myself. I used to take things, even when I didn't realize I was taking things personally, I really did. So if you, if you think about the whole don't take it personally, I mean, you know, if somebody says to you, don't take this personally, <laughs> they're probably gonna say something you don't want to hear. <laughs> so we, we have already have a, a thing in our mind about taking things personally, but it, it goes across every area. So if you think even of, you know, a work situation. So whether you're working for somebody or, or working for yourself, you know, we, we, we provide a piece of work to a piece of work. And then if somebody likes it, we feel good and we feel validated. And then if they don't like it, we feel very upset, but we're taking it personally in both ways. I'm sure that anybody that is doing a piece of work is doing it to the best they can. So therefore what the other person, how they receive it, if it's not very good and there's something you can change, great. But you don't need to take it personally. It's not anything to do with you. And um, with coaching, you know, I have a mentee who, who received a really good bit of feedback recently from someone she was coaching. And naturally, she was thrilled. And obviously, I was thrilled for her. But in the same way that we would say, as, as you know, in, in, in the coaching we do, that it's nothing to do with us if somebody gets an insight. It's not down to us what they what they actually get from the session then we can't take it personally if somebody didn't get very much if they didn't get an insight or they didn't quite hear but people do they start suddenly start to wonder if they're doing is what they're doing right are they what's going on and they start to take things very personally and relationships that's always a great one isn't it take everything personally in a relationship so you know if you're if you if your partner and i'm obviously not talking about any kind of abuse that's entirely different but on a day-to-day -day nitpicking way that we could be, is if your partner says something that you think isn't very nice, you might think, well, that's a bit harsh. Or... Now, there are ways, there are different ways to react to this. Everyone's going to have an instant reaction, but I'm talking about a more long-term of a few minutes reaction. So you might think, well, why did he say that to me? That's not very nice. And how could he say that to me? I do all this. Or you might get hurt and think, why would he say this to me? You know, there are various ways we can react. But it's still nothing to do with, with the words that are said. It's all to do with the way we are feeling. So when we say, um, as we always say in the principles world, that we are, um, you know, our feelings are not telling us anything. There's no information in the feeling apart from the way you're thinking. Well, that's the same as when we take things personally. There's no information. We don't have to take what somebody said and make that mean something about us or them or the relationship or the piece of work or what you're wearing, nothing, you see? And that's what I, I really want to help people to see that we can only ever take ourselves personally. 
<laughs> so so if 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 I get if I get upset, if somebody said something to me and I felt and I had a reaction and I felt upset about it, I'm not taking their words personally. I'm taking what I think those words mean about me. So I'm taking my own thoughts personally. It's nothing to do with them at all. <laughs> um, I had a little boy I was working with once and he was being um, bullied at school and it was mild bullying, thank goodness, but he was he, he had some anxiety about it. And he said that these the people, the boys in the school come up to him and they say, you've got a disease and they run away. And, and he got very hurt by this. And I can understand that. And, you know, I was feeling with him. But I said to him, do you have a disease? And he said, no. I said, OK, so why are you taking any notice of what they said? I said, what would you do if they came up to you and said, you're a stripy giraffe? He said, well, I'd, I'd laugh. I'd say, no, I'm not. So I said, why? Said, because I'm not a stripy giraffe. He said, no, but you don't have a disease either. <laughs> you know, but it's the way we then take on what we think that means about what somebody's thinking about us. Um, and, and back to the kind of reaction, let's say, in a relationship. If, if we see that the, that if, if we recognise that we are only feeling what we're thinking about, we're only experiencing the kind of thoughts that are in our head, then we can see that somebody else is doing the same. So if somebody says something that sounds mildly unpleasant or, or mean, we don't have to make that mean anything about us. We know that that's telling us about the kind of thoughts they're in at the time. So a bit like when Amy was talking about compassion, instead of being reactive, getting upset, taking it personally, we can think, oh, have more, a little bit of compassion for them. And then we don't have to get into a whole uh, melee of emotion. <laughs> we can just let it go, yeah? So <clears throat> I really, really, really strongly um, believe that the less we take personally, the easier life can be. I'm not talking about it being a pass to somebody consistently being mean to you. you know, I mean, you can hit them over the head with a frying pan if you want. I'm not saying that you don't, you don't have to um, take anything that you, if somebody's being consistently mean, you can do something about it however you want to, but you don't need to make it mean anything about you. It's a, and also, when we take ourselves personally, you know, I have so many clients over the years that have really beat themselves up because they, they maybe break a diet or they, or they, they, they want to, to exercise and then they don't for a while. And, and then they really, really get upset with themselves as if it means something about them. You know, they start talking about being like sabotaging themselves. And I'm always saying to people, you, you can't sabotage yourself because how can you sabotage yourself? You're just not doing something that you wanted to do. That's it. So the less that we take ourselves personally and everything that we do, the easier life is. And the, light, the more that we see that when we do get upset about something that we think somebody said, we recognise that it's our thoughts we're taking personally. And how many times has somebody said something off the cuff and um, we think about it and then people obsess about it? Well, that person might have said this two hours ago and thought nothing of it. And, and two days later, that you're, you're obsessing still about what they said and making it mean something and making it mean something about the relationship or, your, or how you look or how you act or, or you go out for an evening and then you think you might have said something to somebody, said something that, that, that they may have taken offence to and then you really suffer for that. I mean, I've, I've talked before about um, Alice Samoye who was a really um, big singer in the 80s. I mean, she, she had some, some great songs out and she was a big fan of Elvis Costello and she went to see him at a concert and they were both invited to the same after show party. And she found herself standing next to him and he said, what did you think of the show? And what she wanted to say was, it was amazing, it was fantastic, it was, and what she actually said was, uh, well, it went on a bit. <laughs> and then and she, when she, she, and she obsessed about this to the extent she didn't leave her house for years, for years. You know, now, 
that's a real case of somebody taking their own thoughts personally, isn't it? Because, I mean, who knows what Elvis Costello thought, but I bet he didn't think about it for very long. <laughs> but literally for years, she didn't go out. You know, we, we, we take everything so personally. And I'm a big believer in a healthy dose of so what in our lives. And I don't mean that in a careless, so what, don't care way. I mean, you're on a diet and then you, you eat something you wish you hadn't. Oh, well, so what? It's a line. Draw a line, move on. It's like a full stop, so what? Oh, someone, oh, you know, someone, oh, someone's in a bad mood. Or, you know, rather than thinking, is it, what have I done? Have I upset that person? I mean, the standard case is you, you come in and somebody's in a quiet mood and you say, is everything okay? And they say, yeah, yeah. And you think, well, that doesn't sound like them. What is it? And then you might ask again. And then they say, no, 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 nothing. And then what people do is they go into thinking, what have I done? Is it something I've done? Is it something I've said? Did, did, should I have done something? Should I have done more? What have it? And then, and then they're obsessing about what they think is happening, and then they either react in a really angry way, <laughs> because you know why should you be upset with me? Well, that person isn't upset with you, or, or they get very hurt and retreat. Whereas if you think you, know, you could always say to that person, "Is there anything I can do?" And if they say no, that's it. Hands off. Okay. Well, so what? That's fine. I'll move on. Still be myself around you without all the maelstrom of thought that goes with it so i'm rabbiting a bit here and i'm talking fast as i normally do but um if if we have that reaction and we we have that reaction where we know we've taken something personally if we could go back to neutral that that means we can we can rebalance now, when, when in the principles world, we often talk about going back to neutral, and it can sound like one of those phrases that people use that don't mean very much. And, and quite often, you know, we think of neutral being a bit boring, a bit bland, you know, neutral colours, a bit dull. I actually quite like neutral colours, but you know what I mean. It's, we can go, it, we think it's that place of mm, not much going on, really. Yes, it is. That place of not much going on. It's a place of back to peace, back to not having a thousand thoughts about what somebody said or what somebody did or how we are reacting to it, but back to that place of being comfortable without judgment and opinion of somebody else or ourselves. So, you know, I, I used to take things so personally years ago without even noticing I did. And so much so that, you know, we've, we've, we've often talked to people that talk about being shy I really, really held on to that for years. I really felt incredibly shy in social circumstances. I acted the opposite because I, I realized at a very young age that if somebody thinks you're shy, there's a lot of fuss made and to bring you out of yourself. And, well, that's the last thing you want, isn't it? If you're really a bit shy. So I realized that if you act fairly confidently, then it's okay. What I didn't realize for years, of course, was that when I was acting confident, confidently, I was having confident thoughts. Well, I was confident in that moment. <laughs> I thought that was kind of over there. That was, you know, a different persona. But of course, the only reason I could ever feel shy is because I was taking my thoughts about what I thought other people might think about me personally. So I was incredibly um, in, in taking myself personally without realizing at all. So. I think the more that we can see that in every situation, the easier life is to navigate. You know, even with children, you've got a teenager, and not everybody has a teenager who shouts, I hate you and you're the worst parent, but many teenagers do say something like that. Now, and if, if your toddler said that, people don't really take much notice. They, they know that they're toddler. If they say, I hate you, they know that they're tired or hungry or just, you know, up or whatever they don't take it as personally because they, are, they think always too young or they're too young but if a teenager says that often parents take it incredibly personally they get really hurt upset angry however it would be well as we know teenagers have a lot going on and the worst thing you can be doing to your teenager is giving them then the responsibility of them worrying about your feelings 
because then they've got added, added emotion, added. So, of course, somebody says, I hate you, you're a horrible parent, you could have a reaction, understandably. But then when back to the compassion part, back to when you see they're no different to the way they were when they were a toddler. They're no different. They're just tired, hungry, or have a lot on their mind. And it's nothing to do with you. You don't have to take it personally. So I so kind of rabbit you to be. So I don't know if you want to jump in on this, but. Well, when I'm listening to you, I recognize all of it. It's been, has been part of my life and still crops up. But yes. it just feels like fundamentally you're saying this constructed life that we live, these bars, call it what you like, yes. the box that we live within doesn't really exist beyond no, not at all. thinking. Yeah. Totally. So ultimately, it's freedom in whatever arena you're talking about, relationships, life, just you and me going for a walk. It's like, how is that walk going to be? Well, it depends what you take with you in your mind. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, we live on the beach. Well, we can, I can go for a walk on the beach and be amazed as I am constantly looking at the sea right now, amazed at the beauty, or I can go with the head full of whatever I'm thinking about and the sea doesn't exist. But I really do think with the whole taking it personally, when we see that we are never, ever, ever taking anything personally, apart from our own personal thoughts, that's freedom mm. because we don't have to worry about what, what other people are thinking about us, what we're doing, the other people judging us, other people's opinions, because we know that that's, even if they did have an opinion on what we're doing, that's nothing to do with you. Yeah, and I, I, one of the things that occurs to me is when you can relax <clears throat> around that and see more and more of it, when perhaps you do see somebody behaving mean, and actually they are behaving mean, it yeah. gives you options as to how much grace you're going to bring into the conversation where you say, I just want to let you know how I, I feel. And yes. I know, and, you know, like in the principles, you go, well, I know it's not you creating it, but nevertheless, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it gives us options where we navigate relationships. To Absolutely. Put on so just some honesty and say, like, but this is how I feel. And I know that if you could help me, I, I might be able to work through that as opposed to like, stop doing what you're doing because yeah. you, 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 yes. As yeah. opposed to just right now, it'd be really helpful if you could just be mm. mindful of that. And it's like asking for help. It gives you that Ooh. potential Ooh. to ask for help instead of to, to criticize or to push away or all the other things you described. And I think that's powerfully important. And it also allows... You can say to someone, you know, uh, the way you spoke to me earlier it wasn't it wasn't very nice. Yeah. And then, but if you're saying it from a place of no emotion, no hurt or anger or upset, or the the other person that you're saying that to is unlikely to react in the way they would yeah. if you were saying it. You know, don't talk to me like that. How dare you talk to me like that? Why are you or or being very hurt? Um, it just allows them to recognize, oh yeah, maybe I was a bit mean, sorry. Or it, it just, it, as I say, it just helps to navigate life in a much easier way, effortless way. Because, you know, I, I know, I know that years ago I, um, well, like, you know, I, 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 I took things so seriously in a relationship. I took, what people might have said or done or what I was thinking in that moment really seriously and and you know was happy to throw a grenade under a relationship because because I was taking things personally because you know I didn't like the way somebody was acting or I didn't like the way they were talking or I just didn't like the way I was feeling in that moment and blamed it on them a thousand reasons and now it's just so much easier to recognize I'm just taking myself personally I'm not, I'm not, it's nothing to do with the other person. I see, if they're being mean, you can call them out on it for sure. But the day-to-day -day irritations and upsets and the build up and build up and build up and nothing. They're just my thoughts at the time. And yet, and yet we, we do spend most of our time filled with, with thoughts about, I think, I, I mean, I don't know other anyone people. who doesn't take things personally, nobody. Yes. And but, but with, even without, as I'm listening to you, like Sue said, I mean, I can recognise 
myself in you know everything that you you've you've talked about um and then there's the invisible and then there's the invisible you know for me it feels like and then there's the invisible oh well, i don't do that that much and then I, you're like yeah, exactly <laughs> yes but, you know you know i still do you know you just use that word blame i will blame yes. other people or the world or the state of the state of the economy that's you know yes. it's like yeah, um, yeah. Yes, totally. it's easy, isn't it? It's easy to it's point easy. fingers. And, and it's easy. I feel this way because, you know, of lockdown, for example. I mean, that's prime at the moment, isn't it? It's like yes. so many, so yeah. many people walking around in anxiety at the moment and fear. Yeah. And I'm hearing all sorts of stories about how people, as you're, you're coining it, you know, taking things personally. Absolutely, like taking the financial situation in the world very personally at the moment they've lost their job they've got families to feed mm -hmm. and it's creating heart attacks and strokes and yes, lots, of, lots of depression and i think there's there's a place where we if we as you're saying you know if we really really understand that not taking the thoughts that come up in our heads personally and making meaning of them yes and we'll yes. be living a much a much ease, ease, not ease, I don't know if it's easier, but easeful. Well, it's, it is easier because it only because you're not caught up all the time. Yeah. And things are always easier when, when you're not going to for thinking. Yeah, totally. But even, even, um, I mean, totally with the, with the pandemic, with the virus, people are taking the virus serious, um, not seriously, personally. They're taking that personally as if it's doing, being done to them. Now, of course, the less you take personally as well, the less you'll ever be in victim mode. And that's always nice too, because you're not a victim because yeah, things happen. But, but even, even um, when you have your own business, let's say, and maybe you're going to put uh, a new course out or you're going to do a new program or you're doing something. And then on Facebook, somebody else brings it out. People take things like that personally even because they, they, they take, oh no, I can't do this now. Oh no! It's still as if as if that person, you know, you may not even know them, <laughs> but we take that personally. Oh no! This means that nobody's going to look at mine. This means that I won't get any clients. This means that I no, it means nothing at all. Nothing at all to do with you. Just somebody else has another program, you know. But even in little things like that, we people take things personally. And things like it rained on my birthday, which it didn't. Yes, exactly. I mean, you know, growing up, I think, oh, you know, always rains. It's on not my fair. <laughs> it's my birthday, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, we can we can recognise the humanness of that and the the the, the 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 misunderstanding that leads to things, and it doesn't really, you know, at that level, it's kind of like mm, that must be disappointing. You know, we can be kind and we can be understanding. It's not like saying until we all reach this groove where we're. Yeah. walking around and you know in this bubble of sort of peaceful wonderment that's beautiful but mm. as humans I think I think we have many many colors of, of experience absolutely and it still doesn't matter I'm always saying to clients it doesn't matter that you have a reaction to things you're never going to be you know I won't say who somebody told me recently that, that a friend of theirs had called their son Zen and I thought, oh my God, that's child cruelty. <laughs> Can you imagine every time he gets upset at school? Oh, not very zen, are you? <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, that's an unachievable um, destination to be zen. You know, I have, I have mentees that say, oh, you know, I wish I could be like you. You're, you, you know, you're always calm. Or you're always... I say, talk to Toby. <laughs> talk to my daughters. <laughs> They'll tell you that that's not true at all. You know, we all get caught up in things. We all get upset by triviality as well as as big things but i think when you see that oh you know i'm taking this personally it's just easier to step away from it a little bit it's it's also to see it your own pantomime at times I know, it's it's, you, you know i choose to stay in my pantomime at times yes but at yes. some level it's serving me i mean it's not, it's not i can't say that i would give you know I, i'd say i'll go back to that one it was a great hit but i think when we look at the more serious side of life you don't want to be exhausted with uh, um, mm -hmm. thinking that's night and day and you don't yes. want to be preoccupied. If you have something to deal with, what we're looking for is a, a degree of clarity. And I think yes. everything that you've said is saying, here's 
here's the direction to look in mm. so that when life gets really tough and it really 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 does get tough yes. yeah. that you know we can we can laugh about the trivial things but people are facing really really important things oh but yes absolutely you're saying to me what i hear you saying is like well if you're caught up about somebody looking at you the wrong way in the supermarket how are you going to fare when you're dealing with the the the, the really you know quite crucial things in your life and mm-hmm. i think if you can look at this if you start where you're talking then it blossoms in your life and um you have the clarity and wisdom to mm-hmm. see differently in, in certain in, in certain t- times yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's interesting you just said about being in your pantomime because after the last Beaver talk where Judy Sedgman did that wonderful talk about um, happiness is a choice, well, she didn't talk about that, but that came into it. Um, a few days later, a couple of days maybe, I, I was just totally overwhelmed because, you know, Tony was going into hospital and we were on strict, I mean, we'd, we'd been avoiding people anyway because because of the operation that was looming, but he was going in, we were on strict, not seeing anybody. And then, and, and you know, somebody in my life was very upset because um, we hadn't seen each other for, you know, since the middle of March and it was, and there was loneliness and upset. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I felt overwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed because I felt like I, there, were, there were people I needed to be with and I couldn't be with everybody at once. Blah, 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 blah. And I remember thinking about Judy say, Sessions saying, well, happiness is a choice. And I was thinking, it's bloody not in this instance. <laughs> I'm trying to choose, but no, but at the same time, I could laugh at myself for thinking that, that, that I would, you know, choose my thoughts to be happy ahead of time. But, um, but even when I was overwhelmed in that moment, um, I still knew that there was too much I in it. I was taking myself personally because I was feeling responsible for people that I'm not responsible for. I was worrying about other people's upsets or concerns that again, I'm, I have nothing to do with. I can't, that's just all the way they are in the moment. And I knew that if I just left it alone, I would feel differently. And of course I did. And of course everybody around me did. The, 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 you know, the, the, the person in my life actually was okay in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, there was nothing to worry about with Tony's operation. We were totally fine about that coming up. So when I was in it, it obviously, as we know, it felt overwhelming and heavy and hard, but I still knew that if I took the myself out of it, if I took what I was taking personally out of it, it would all be okay. I mean, it would be how it was, but you know, I, I didn't need to be, be in that feeling about it. So I, I do think that taking the eye, the personal, the out of the situation helps tremendously. And the first step is obviously to recognize the, the, the truth of what you're saying. Um, yes. Yeah. And it is easier than we think it is because we just got to recognize, oh, well, back to me again. Even when we don't think, even if we think we're being the most unselfish, caring person in the world, when we take things personally, it's about, it's about, it's all about me. Yeah. Well, even if you think the other way around be interesting what's that i've got to take myself out of the rest of my day <laughs> quite fun it's quite fun quite but hard. um but even if you think about when somebody else has been upset about something you've said or done when they've taken something that you maybe a remark you made that was totally innocuous to, to you occupant or just and and somebody has taken it incredibly personally it's, it's, it's a shock sometimes. We say, why would, you, why would you take that person? Why would you even think I meant that? Yeah. Well, keep it around. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Fun, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Mm. I, like, I love what you said about the not being a victim. I think that's, like, that's one of the biggest things that I heard and really important because when we again what you're saying is taking the eye out but but this idea it's not an idea but this habit of putting ourselves into victim mode is so common isn't it it's just so common yes yeah and i don't we don't think anybody's doing it purposely it's it's what we've learned to do and it side effect isn't it it just becomes a habit Mm. 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 taking everything personally and thinking the world's out to get me 
Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, yeah. The world is a fearful place. Yeah. 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 So. So. Yeah. And 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 you know, people will have fears, and people will have anxieties, and stress, and upset, and illness, and and all of those things. But the more that we can, the more that we can even take the eye out of that, then the easier it is to 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 navigate. You know, and if someone has. Um, like I've said before, if someone has a diagnosis of an illness, they're not the illness. The illness hasn't been done to them. Mm. It's 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 something to get through. It's something to do. It's something to, you know, but it's not being done to you. No, that's a really big one, isn't it? Mm. I think. So the, the message the message here isn't like you said. It's not about we have to be happy all the time. And oh God, no. <laughs> That's, that's not that's a strain yeah yeah and i'll be zen as you said yeah. you know, be zen 100 percent of the time else you're failing yes. That's, yes. The, the message here is to to wake up to the way that we the way that we're seeing seeing yes. yeah the way that we're seeing ourselves yeah. and the way that yeah. we're seeing other people and how it even work. even then uh, it's, it's so true what you said about people thinking they're failing how can you fail how can you fail you know I always remember years ago um, at a conference, a woman um, whose name I can't remember, she's got a wonderful blog about uh, her, she's got, I think, two autistic children, and she said, oh, she, and she said um, that she suddenly thought about her son, I mean, she, she's a religious woman, and, but she suddenly thought about her son, and she thought, God didn't have an off day when he created him, <laughs> and I thought, that's lovely, that's really lovely, you know, we we can't be, we're all perfect, as we always say, we're all perfect as we are, but you know, we didn't, there was no one having an off day when we were created. No, we, we're not, we weren't born to, we are born to be, not to be more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's what is behind, that's what comes before anything that we create. It's just there, it's just there, yes. the, the space, the potential is always yes. there, untouched, perfect. Yes. And ready, it's always yes. And, uh, yes, but whatever we do, whatever yeah. we do, we don't have to. If 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 we ha if we have a whole list of to do things that we have created, and we and then somebody decides to lie on the sofa and watch Netflix all day, well, there you go. <laughs> you know, that's up to them, isn't it? That's up to. There's no failing in that. There's no. But but what then people do is then take the idea that they haven't done what they thought they were going to do personally, yeah. and then they suffer for it. Well, we're all going to stop, aren't we? <laughs> I will if you will. <laughs> What's the, I was trying to think of the pantomime expression there. He's behind you. Oh, yeah, no. yeah he looked behind you. Oh, yes, yeah. it is. We play that with ourselves, don't we? We become the villain yes. and, the, and the, the god fairy and all the other characters. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, well, a bit more booing, I say, <laughs> when we have that ball. Get on. Just get yes. On. yes, exactly. Yes. See yeah. how long that pantomime lasts without you. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So so much more so what? Oh, I didn't do that. Oh, so what? I'll do it tomorrow. Do it later. Rather yeah. than continually thinking anything, you use it as a full stop. Yeah. yeah. And and seeing back to neutral, seeing neutral. Why always think of, of a hammock or you know, do you remember that wonderful chair that you had? Do you remember that chair, Sheila, that Sue had that you in the garden that you could get yeah, into? Yeah, yeah. Pod, pod, the pod, the pod, pod. The pod. Yeah. it was wonderful. Well, that's like being neutral. That's going back, that's this lying back in that. Mm. Hanging being around. held. Mm. Mm? Yeah. Just hanging around on the yes. yeah. the, the interesting thing is, I think there's some resistance to that whole idea of, well, if I do that, I'll never get anything done. The opposite is true. The Absolutely. Go of that, whatever yes. it is. Yes. Then the, the flood of creativity comes. The, the pr yes. productiveness comes. L give yourself a day, and yes. see what happens. As opposed yes. to no, make every day work. Make every day. Yes, work. exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's that's it. Is it, we we have this, and then if we don't do it, we think we failed. We take that personally. That means something about us. Then we feel even worse, and that's a great place to create from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool I, I, at this point I always look to Sheila because I'm hopeless with time and Sheila isn't hopeless with oh, time well, I was leaving yeah. it to you today since oh, you were... <laughs> well, 
it feels like we've, we've had a great you know time we've we, we've journeyed with you and um i think that essential message is one that we want to want to share with people and we'll be looking at throughout viva in at the end of october on the yeah. 23rd 24th 25th Look forward to it yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, we are. We've, been, we've spent quite a lot of time in the last couple of days planning out the agenda. So, yeah, we're even more excited to see what's, what's, you know, what's coming forth, what's been birthed in a way. And so the topic, you know, pairing people up to speak. Oh, what are we, oh maybe we'll add a surprise in there. Oh, look, oh, 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 what we could do there. So, yeah, we've been, we've been having a lot of fun. With this sort of the 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 the, the number of this conversation in a way that does inform us as we go forward because there have been plenty of times I'm sure where I've said stuff or I've been a bit short or whatever and, and mutually and we can, I kind of think for the longest time we, we don't get caught up in that and and that leaves us freer and, and Sheila was reminding me this morning like oh we were struggling to make something fit you know like this you know, is this going to work and then we both well she reminded me like this is too hard isn't it let's just no, that's going to go off. It's too hard. We're making that, trying yes. to make that fit. And we know that our, when the flow, nothing is difficult. Yes. Like, oh, yeah, let's call it that. Let's put that in there. And so it's like you get a new north, don't you? Like yes, it comes to orientates. And sometimes, yes. uh, well, not sometimes, it's always helpful. Mm. It's catching yourself, isn't it? When he's like, you know, oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a square peg into a round hole here. But you know, you can try for that, and then it's like, mm, what are we doing? No, that, you know, no. Yeah. And the minute that you kind of, it's that beach ball holding it under the water yeah. thing. Isn't it? The minute that you take your hands off and go, actually, no. It's like, oh, now there's now there's room for for more to come in. It's been yeah. that's taking yourself seriously, isn't it? In a way of like, oh, I must have a solution to this. I should be able to come up with the way this works. And when you realise, no, you shouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Um, Why should you? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who said? <laughs> yeah right. it's kind of like you have, the, you have the first idea don't sorry you have the first idea and that sounds like a really good idea and then the second idea and then oh let's make it well but that okay so put those with those and that time and with that time and it's like oh no and it, you know that first idea was great but then yeah. now we've gone a bit further down the road it's not looking so good and it's just been i suppose you know being willing to look up and go hmm yeah yeah absolutely willing to let go of just because you had the idea willing to let it go without making it mean anything yeah kids do that all the time don't they don't well, they i'm going to let it go without meaning anything i won't take it personally <laughs> well, we had enough of blame. it did go on a bit <laughs> okay well, thank you ever so you know that <laughs> And thanks to every, anyone and everyone who's been with us this morning. Um, as you know, this goes out, so it'll be available forever. And um, yeah, so thank you, Elaine. We're just thank you. Lovely to see you both. Yes, nice to see you. Not All right, then. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.